Okay, so welcome everybody. Oh, we have somebody from Rwanda. Welcome. Welcome. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this TechSoup hosted webinar. Today is Building a Story Brand. This is clarifying your message so supporters will listen. And I'm looking forward to watching the replay of this one because I know it's going to be good. So let me show you how you can engage today. Everybody is on mute. If you need the closed caption, somebody has already turned it on, just click on that CC button at the bottom of your screen so you can see the closed caption. If you have a question, please type it in the Q&A section. Um, there's probably gonna be hundreds of people here. If you type it in the, in the question section or in the chat section, we'll probably still be able to grab it, but we would love you to put it in the Q&A. Check your email in about 48 hours. Probably tomorrow we're gonna email you the video, the slides, and maybe some extra links. So make sure you open your um, your email that comes in. And if you learn something cool, please share it in hashtag TechSoup. So I'm going to tell you about one new exciting thing we have here at TechSoup, and it's called Quad. You can do more good together. And this is a, a special community that we have here at TechSoup. I'm going to put a link in the chat for TechSoup. But what's most important today is this webinar that you're going to learn. So I'm going to turn this over to Jason. You guys have a great webinar. Bye-bye. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jason Spangler. I'm our Director of Business Development at TAP Network. Um, I'm joined today by my Creative di Director, Chad uh, Ballou, sorry. Um, and a little back, bit, little background on myself. So I, I work with TAP Network and I end up heading up a lot of the conversations with the members from, Ta from TechSoup on ways that we can either help them from a thought leadership perspective or if we can actually be boots on the ground and help them accomplish marketing, uh, you know, achievements or goals. A uh, little background on you, Chad, if you want. Hi, my name is Chad Ballou, uh, Creative Director with TAP Network. Uh, I have over 20 years agency experience working with a wide range of brands. You can sort of think of me as um, the movie director to your brand story uh, that we'll be discussing today. So that'll be the first of many movie analogies. Perfect. So background on TAP Network, just to get everyone on the same page, um, we're a full service digital marketing agency that's partnered with TechSoup now over the last eight plus years. Together, we've been able to provide a, just a tremendous amount of marketing and thought leadership and expertise to not only TechSoup, but also their members. I, mean, I think we've worked with thousands at this point. Uh, it's pretty unbelievable. So we appreciate, appreciate you joining us today and hope that we can provide you some actual insights. I know this is a topic today that I personally am excited to talk about because I inherently get drawn into a lot of website discussions. It's one that comes up often with clients looking for help with marketing. They're like, my website's not good. And it's interesting because half those discussions end up being they need help with content and story messaging as well. And so I think this is going to be very informative today and I hope you guys have take a lot out of this and you're able to turn around and apply it to your individual organizations. Um, Let's jump right in. So today we're going to talk about building your brand story. Um, little outline of what we're going to accomplish. And let's just jump right into distilling your story. Chad, you want to kind of walk us through the beginning? Absolutely. So what, what do we mean when we say distilling down your, your brand story? It's really about um, taking that larger form uh, of your of your narrative, even you know, and then really distilling it down to what we're going to call your brand story. So uh, that that in doing so, we need to really know your audience. You know, we we want to be specific and intentional. We need to be bold, but especially important to not be polarizing, and and, and provide a clear and concise narrative. So you know, we want to ask: Is it relevant? Is it is it ownable? And distinct. You you do want to stand out from the crowd, but obviously, like we said, not not alienate uh, your supporters. So, uh, you know, they're they're the audience of your story. And so, as I mentioned, some movie and uh, more movie analogies to come. Uh, you know, in a in a world saturated with information, and the the power of being concise is is extremely important. So, sound bites are are you know sort of your elevator pitch for your brand. And we're, we're, we're looking for that. We're looking for that succinct expression that really encapsulates the essence of your story. We, wanna, we want to craft a clear and concise message that resonates with your audience and, and leaves a lasting impression. So ultimately what we're talking about here is the tagline for your movie poster, really. 
Right. I mean, and to, to uh, summarize that, maybe, Chad, it's the goal is to partner with those who believe what you believe. Simple and concise, right? So if you talk about what you believe, you ultimately are going to attract those that share those same beliefs. I, I include this Mark Twain quote because I think it's wildly important to understand it when it comes to messaging from a brand standpoint, because if I had more time, I would have written a shorter letter. Be intentional. Be specific and speak to the those that you know your messaging will resonate with. So before we move on, we want to jump into a quick poll because I'm very interested to hear how everyone, is, wh where they are currently with their nonprofit. You know, so do you feel your nonprofit has a clear, distinct brand story? A, no, you don't have a brand story and need help making one. That was pretty obvious for a lot of people, I think. Uh, B, you have a story, but it hasn't been standardized. So let's say your team is telling it in multiple ways or multiple capacities. Um, they're telling it different on different social media mediums, stuff like that. Uh, C, you have a standardized story, but it no longer matches your evolved mission. A lot of the nonprofits I speak with, they've been around for a while. And as missions and initiatives change, uh, the messaging on, their, or at least their digital messaging, doesn't seem, it always lags behind. And the last one is, yeah, we got a solid story. It's relevant. It's succinct. I'm just looking for a pointer or two. I just want, it's a, we understand it constantly evolves. And I just want to be ready for that next little slight adjustment to make sure that our company is pivoting. So they're coming in. It's interesting. I'm not... I'm not that surprised, Chad, with what I'm seeing right now with the poll, because I feel that a lot of people have a story. They feel like they they know it, but it's never been standardized. And so often their you know, ED might say it one way, but then they're, some of their biggest supporters and evangelists might tell a different story. It's got the same narrative, roughly, but it's different. Mm, exactly. So I'm going to go ahead, if there's anyone else, I'm going to go ahead and end that poll. Super informative there. Um, so majority of you, yes, have a story, but it's not standardized with a lot coming in second that you just need to help making one for in general. So I think we can help with both of those today. So before we kind of jump into stories, I'm going to maybe annoy you. I don't know. So I'm huge on psychology, especially when it comes to my background has primarily been from a sales aspect. And I've done that across multiple industries and in multiple ways. And it's, I find this just wildly interesting that the psychology of asking why and how it applies to your audience. And so like most organizations I speak to, they, if I ask them, what is your mission? Clear and concise. They can give it to me on a silver platter. If I ask them how they accomplish it, they normally could they, they make some missteps or maybe there's some questionable things, but they normally can define that as well. But when you turn around and ask them why it's important, I find that people struggle. They're they're unsure and they might know why it is for them, but they're not sure if that matches the organization. And that's an issue. At the end of the day, your neocortex, so part of your brain that responds with the what, the part that you can quickly and easily tell people is responsible for just the rational and analytical thinking. So this is facts. What happens, right? Great. But the limbic section of our brain that's responsible for the how and why, that's responsible for all of our human behavior, the trust, loyalty, all of our feelings. In other words, the reason people choose to jump on board with an organization. Now, what's even more interesting when we kind of dive into this is so great. So the limbic brain controls how and why. But how do we speak to it? Well, the limbic brain doesn't have a capacity to understand language. So while you're like, wait a minute. So we need to talk and say why, but we can't do it in language. It's done through the emotion. It's done through what your dreams are. So people aren't going to buy what you do. They buy why you do it. I mean, what you do simply serves as the proof of what you believe. In other words, those statistics, the proof, that's all the proof. But to inspire your audience, you have to start with why. And that's the ability to inspire those around them. That's what you want to try to do is inspire those around you. Or if you can't, inspire the people around them so they can keep pushing your mission forward. 
I'm going to jump into the next slide for you, Chad. Kind of yes. bring it full circle for us. Exactly. So like Jason just talked about the psychological importance of your brain's narrative. And there's much more to this uh, in terms of just overall science that goes all behind this. And so, you know, uh, research has shown a 300% increase in uh, content with a narrative focus, uh, having increased engagement. Um, we know that the narratives can trigger the release of oxytocin, which is a, a hormone that goes back to the parts of the brain that Jason was just talking about that's associated with empathy, trust, and, and social bonding. So you can kind of see where we're going here. Uh, this, this emotional engagement can really enhance the retention of information, that information being your brand story and what, what, you, what you offer. And so all, all that is to say is that your story, it really, really matters. And you want it to resonate with your audience, your supporters, on on that emotional level through that narrative and so uh, essentially this is your movie and so just to kind of play that off again and so that's that's how we increase that uh, engagement is through is through that emotion of your narrative exactly so how do we start unlocking this what is your brand story i mean what is your organization's role and how can you reasonably accomplish this task you know what what are you trying to do uh, Chad, Chad and I, when creating this slide deck, we, we started laughing because this, for us, this was the embodiment of it. So Chad, I'm going to let you go because I <laughs> love this, but yes, by all means. Right. So the, the question being, how, how do we unlock your story? Right. So, so first off, you, you really need to think of your brand as your audience's guide on their quest. Right. And so I'm sure, given the photo here, I'm sure hopefully most of you are familiar with Lord of the Rings. Uh, we realize this is a somewhat uh, nerdy analogy here, so stay with me. But uh, it, your audience and your supporters are are also part of that story. So uh, when people who believe what you believe will will make your cause their own and help help really grow your impact. So you want to inspire them and guide them and and most importantly empower them to make their dreams come true, just just like Gandalf in this example. So we want to uh, enable them to be the hero of their story. And so by doing so, we, we, we share in the dream uh, and they know that the guide will take them to the, the, the promised land or, or to find the, the quote unquote elixir that they're seeking. Um, and so even though you have a brand story to tell, everyone also has their own story and journey and need state that's relative to your brand story. And, and we really, we wanna make them the hero in that. And in doing so, we will be their guide in order to achieve that. And going back to the psychology end of it, it, it's important because most people are inherently followers. I think it's like anywhere from 10 to 12% of the population actually want to be like early adopters. They want to take risks, big risks. And so a lot of people just want to follow those that lead, not because they have to, but because they want to. It, it, it kind of, it's, it's personal for them. But for, you know, it was, per, yeah, it's not, sorry, it's not for them, but for them, for ourselves, people are inherently selfish. And so put yourself in the position to help guide them. I think a good example of this is, you know, Dr. King. I mean, he gave the, I have a dream speech, not the, I have a plan speech. And I totally stole that, but I think it's a very moving sentence. And I like it because dreams do inspire. They're all, you know, they're all, it's, yes, they inspire. But plans don't. I mean, I think we've all seen many politicians talk about all their plans. And how inviting is that? It's sterile, to say the least. Um, so let's jump in. So now that we've talked about how we're going to try to, we need you to be the guide, the guide of what? As a chat, I'm going to have you walk us through kind of the hero's story. Yeah, that, see, so to, to, to back up, here's the good news. The, the framework is already there. We're not reinventing the wheel. And, and that's, I feel like that's good news for all of us. So in order to understand and implement that, we use what we're calling the hero's story. And you, I'm sure many of you have heard of the hero's story. It's a very established formula of storytelling that's just everywhere throughout movies, 
and books going back as far as the mediums themselves. And so we want to we want to align ourselves with that framework because it's effective and it, it always works, not sometimes, it always works. So when you when you think of it that way and you kind of look through that lens as it as it pertains to your brand, we want to look at it in sort of that three act play, if you will. So act one, known as the departure, is really the call to action. So your organization receives a call to embark on a journey to solve a significant challenge. So you're looking to change something, change people's behavior, change change something. That's that's really what you set out. That's why you started all of this, is to, to achieve that particular goal. And act two is that what, what's called the initiation, crossing the threshold. So your your organization commits to the adventure at that point leaving behind the familiar world. You can start to see how this story arc applies and can apply to just about everything, especially brands, in terms of now it's figuring out what it is, how you're going to achieve those goals from your call to adventure, what you decided to change in the world. And act two is really, how do you do it? And so that's, you know, that's going through the desert and figuring out, you know, how, how are we going to achieve this? And act three, the finale, really is the return, return with the elixir. So after facing your final test out in the wilderness and figuring out how, how, how you're going to achieve this for your organization, um, you know, you, you demonstrate your growth, you return to the real world, if you will, bringing back the benefits of, of the journey that you just embarked upon, and you come back with that elixir. And so that gives you the authority to be the guide for for your supporters and your audience and because they they also want the elixir they also want to achieve what you've achieved or not have to go through the trials and tribulations themselves hence you being the guide and so you want to inspire your audience and supporters to to be part of that story because it aligns with their need states and, and and what they're looking to achieve in themselves and giving them that reason to follow you along with your story and, you know, in the process, you're, you're making them heroes as well. And so it, it, you can start to see how everything really aligns with this tried and true framework of how to tell a story and how that can apply to your brand. And, you know, Chad, bringing this back to the Lord of the Rings example, I think it's a, I'd love, a love to think about too. it. It, uh, you know, Fro the story was all about Frodo. It was individual. It was Frodo's story throughout the, the trilogy and how he ultimately got to destroy the ring to save the world. Well, now he was joined by many comrades, many people that would help him, support him, and they had their own individual stories, but it's important to keep it individual. And it's, that's because it's easier to connect with. I mean, there's right. been study upon study about when you do, if you do your mission about a group of people, it's less precise. It's it, it, people are less likely to connect with it. And so in that story, it was how Frodo went, you know, he had a dream with the ring. He didn't have a plan. He didn't have a way to go. And then slowly the plan formed along the way and he achieved greatness. So I, sorry, I, I think that's just wildly important to understand. And hopefully we're not nerding out a little too hard on this where people understand. If not, hey, Lord of the Rings was a good, was a good trilogy. But the, the, the key you know, takeaway there is this framework applies to just about any story. So pick any story you like and look for these key components in it and you will see that. And so the, the next question is kind of, where do we start? And so you need to establish a plan with defined timelines and a clear def definition of success. Uh, with this, I think there's kind of two pieces which we'll touch on and that's both collection of all your ideas, and then there's that distilling. So the ideation and then the distillation. Uh, from there, you, you have to perform a lot of qualitative research, which we'll jump into, and then ultimately implement your story. Right. And so yeah. who 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 do you bring into this? Who who's involved in this uh, crafting of the story? And I think it ultimately needs to be the people in your organization. Who, who you've inspired and, and those people that also share your dream. So this, this work involves a cross-functional team, including stakeholders at different levels of the organization. So you sort of, you, it's not just one person. 
Oh, and, and then it's research, research, research. I think, uh, but Chad and I were laughing. It's, there's, yes, there's, you need to do a lot. This isn't something you're going to do overnight. I think that's one of the biggest things I want to point out is the goal is to understand why each stakeholder ultimately joined you. What is their why? What is their dream? What do they, what do they personally gain by partnering with your organization? It's personal. It's how people are, but the question is, will they answer it? Can they give you that? Do they, are they are they even self aware? A lot of uh, the reasoning for things like this, especially with nonprofit work, it it's built around internal biases, and those biases were established between like the ages one and five. I mean, so some of these maybe we're not even self aware enough to answer, but for those of us that are, it's moving because it helps us establish that dream for your organization. And, and through that, that lens of storytelling, you, you sort of almost think of the uh, brand as an actor that researches a part. They, they shadow the person they're playing. They become them. So that's really key of this research is really becoming the audience, really. And and once you've done the research, I think it's you've collected everyone's call to adventures, Chad would say. I, I love that. That just is really because it's that dream. You've collected everyone's dream, their call to adventure. You've, you have to identify the commonalities. Like what, what were their barriers to entry? What was stopping them from maybe initially joining? And then what did they personally have to gain by achieving it or partnering or volunteering or donating through you? You know, and then combine all these commonalities and that's ultimately what it will embody your brand's elixir. It's the embodiment there. Who are your biggest evangelists? What is their story? How does it compare to yours? Get all that. Throw it in a blender, figure out what works and deliver it and keep it clean and concise. That's the hard part, right, Chad? I mean, you go right. back to it. I, I would say this is the trials and tribulations phase. This is this is act two. This is this is you out in the desert, uh, you know, on your quest. So that's really the research part of this is act two of the hero's journey. I mean, I can't help but think when I talk to people about websites, when people hit your website for the first time, they decide, make a decision about it. In general, in two to five seconds, you don't get much time to share your thoughts. So it needs to be very straightforward. I mean, so in, when it comes to implementing it, I mean, I, I think that's a, it's a great segue. I forgot the slide was next. Um, it, you have your story, now what? Where do you share it? It needs to be across all your, you know, every place you're sharing and talking to anyone associated with your organization. So your website, which is your 24 seven mission salesperson and really your biggest supporter. That's where everyone goes to see, are you legit? What do you do? Why should they care? And should they, how do they, how can they get involved if they're interested? You know, your outbound marketing campaigns, you know, design a new campaign to put a spotlight on this new story or this new found story or articulated story. That's the combination of everyone that's helped get you where you are today. What a better way than to ask for more grant funding than to put your new story there. Well, ask people to volunteer because now you're looking to partner with people that believe what you believe. It's the same thing. It's you have a shared mission and a shared goal. So benefits of controlling your brand stories. Now that hopefully we're all on the same page with why it's important, how to get there, what is the formula to follow? And, and then Let's talk about what, it, yeah, your benefits. Go ahead, Chad. Well, yeah, no, you, you, I mean, you said it. Your story really applies to everything you do. So it's it's now your North Star that everyone is traveling towards. And so that's, that's not only your organization who's aligned with it, but it's all your supporters, all your stakeholders are now aligned in that uh, vision. And so this, this allows your leadership to make those informed decisions. Um, it, it doesn't just shape marketing efforts but it, it shapes mission initiatives, your cultural evolution, pretty much every aspect of your organization will be transformed and aligned with this North Star of your brand story, your mission, your manifesto. And I think that's important, Chad, because it, by having the North Star, you get everyone marching in the same direction. You're no longer herding cats. People know why they're there. They, they can articulate it. They can say the same thing. So if they talk to me or they talk to Chad, they know, oh, so that's what you got, why you guys do what you do. You know, it, it provides your organization that strategic compass 
to navigate what I, I mean, I, what I call that rapidly expanding universe of marketing outreach options. You can call it what you want, but I think AI has been a huge disruptor this year. I mean, we've embraced it at TAP, but it's hard and it's ever changing. There's many other things that have changed. So as those hurdles come and they will never stop coming, do you have that basis point to ground your organization and then be able to properly identify the best way to push forward? And I I think that's really it. It'll, providing that consistent messaging allows you to benchmark your success and failure. So if you are making a change with AI, well, you know your messaging hasn't changed. And so now you know directly, was it that AI tool that helped us or hurt us? Because you were able to gather those actual insights. Um, it's crazy standardization. It sounds like a boring topic and like something thing people want to avoid, but in many ways, it's what allows us to really grow. So anything to add on there, Chad? I, I don't think so. I think it it's really it's it's one of those things that that sounds simple but but has a lot of moving parts, hence the gears. There's there's a lot going on to build that that story. And it it's really act three is the sort of the easy part, right? Act two is really where we're establishing and creating what that elixir is and becoming the guide for the consumer. And and act three is 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 the implementation. That's where we get to see all of this come to life and its benefits, which leads well into to this slide. You know, this increased productivity and delivery, that's really what we're talking about here is that elixir, that brand elixir. This is this is what your, your story is what you're bringing uh, out, you know, so that your team no longer struggles with articulating your purpose. Um, it, it helps limit non-essential discussions. Again, to to go back and reference what Jason was saying, it's it's that you know everyone's marching in the same direction, so that's why we we, we say the North Star really. So um, it, it standardizes your your mission to a point where it, it resonates internally as well as externally, and again, you start to see the the model of that uh, hero's journey uh, play out. So that now when when once you've returned with that elixir and everyone is marching in that same direction, now we're able to sort of see the fruits of that labor. And, and that is that increased productivity uh, internally. And then also the benefit of having marketing communications that six months down the line, you can put on one wall and you can see your story. It's there. It, there's no question. And so that's really the ultimate goal. And I, I love that one wall test. Chad, that you you bless me with that knowledge, <laughs> and, and it's one that I because it's very visual. So the goal is that everything, all your communication, if you put it up on one big wall, then it all looks the same. And it's it, Chad, you bless me with that, and I was like, wow, that is like so simple. It is amazing. Like how yes, like that's right. what people strive for, and not to be confused with redundancy. It's really about. Uh, a mosaic of your story too but and but but to jason's point you can tell it's all one thing right it, it, it has to be the same ecosystem it has to you right. know be this and it's yeah I, I i love that analogy it, i think it's very moving i mean the big piece here i think is you just need to decode your your brand story you know and the goal here is your story is what you're selling you need to implement it everywhere at the end of the day, your nonprofit is vying for the same non-discretionary income as for-profit companies, but not providing a product in return. I can't say it enough. You're not providing a product in return. I told you I was in sales. So uh, your story, though, is your product. It's your why. It's why people are choosing to partner with you. It's why people are choosing to donate their money or their time to your organization, your beliefs, your dreams, what you've inspired them to do versus buying a product for themselves that they're going to throw away in a year. I mean, but that's where the money's going. It's where it's coming from. And so do you feel your organization has done a good job at selling or establishing what your product is? And I and think that that is, your, your, your brand story done correctly will have the larger form of what it is you do and, and why you believe in what you believe encoded within it. And so that's, that's sort of that, 
that tricky part of it that's part of that big research phase is that you want your brand story to also uh, have, you know, that that encoded language within it that that everyone resonates with, but they don't, you know, they don't necessarily know the entire breadth of everything, but it's distilled down. That's that distillation is really we're, we're encoding everything you do into a succinct, um, relatable, um, engaging story that everyone can resonate with. Exactly. Well, what's next? So we, I, I told everyone in the beginning, we have partnered with TechSoup for a long time. If you're interested in our services, you can go right to the services tab. And we both, we manage the website services and the digital marketing services. All of that is TAP Network. We would love to talk with you. Um, and again, Aretha said she'll be sending these slides out. So also this is kind of a what we can do, what we can accomplish, I find this is great for people to understand kind of how we work as a full funnel marketing company. And But the learn more here, if you click that link, that'll take you directly to a link where you can inquire to learn more about this. So if that's something you're looking for help, yes, we can do. Um, it's something to note that this is, a, when it comes to messaging and story and creating brand stories, this is something we don't have a huge capacity for at TAP. Um, so it is more of a, a bespoke offering, a tailored offering based on individual needs. So I'd say if this is something you're interested in, I would come with a decent budget because this is not something that we can do overnight. This is something you'd be working directly with Chad, my creative director on. And we want to ensure that we can provide you something that we are proud of, just like you. And that is something that takes time. Uh, so moving in, we would like to open up questions. Let's see here. Seeing some uh, questions asking for examples. I'm looking to open it. Sorry. Aretha has left. Allow attendees. All right. I think a good one, Jason and I were talking about earlier, is Panera Bread. Um, they're not necessarily selling you bread specifically, right? They're, they're selling you warmth and an experience. So knowing that your their their consumer may not be, you know, they may be just hungry, right? So they have a need state, and they're you know, maybe they had seen some sort of you know, piece of collateral a couple of days before for Panera, but the, the importance of that piece of collateral is that it wasn't necessarily selling them bread and food. It was selling them warmth and the emotional experience they would receive in coming in and smelling fresh bread. There's, you know, there's a lot of um, emotional and, and uh, sensory experience that goes along with that. So that's what they're that's what they're doing to bring the consumer along with them on their quest for the, you know, the elixir being satisfaction and uh, sustenance, uh, not getting a nice loaf of bread. So that works really well, obviously, for consumer brands. Yeah. I realize that um, with nonprofits, you you're, you have, like I said earlier, in terms of the hero's journey, you have that call to adventure, which is what the why like Jason said, why, why are you doing what you do? And you just have to figure out where they kind of play into that uh, journey along the way and speak to that, I think. Yeah, no, the Panera bread example is an interesting one because if you think of Panera, a lot of people go, okay, they make bread. But if you walk in, they did a whole movement on ensuring that people could experience, it was the experiential end, what it meant to get fresh bread, warm bread doughy gooey bread which is wildly different than what it's like 20 minutes later um and they they moved everything in their way of doing things around ensuring that people could smell it see it so if you walk into a panera you notice all the ovens are forward facing you see it you're part of it because they want you to be a part of that warmth that core thing that humans love we don't want to be hot we don't be cold but being warm that's a sweet spot we like that so they put fireplaces in all the Paneras now. I mean, everything has been really positioned to encapsulate that core human need of being warm. 
And what does it provide? What is it? It is something that I think of the first time I had like a true New Jersey bagel that was fresh and it was gooey. It was like, I, it was like a completely different item than a real bit than a bagel you buy at a grocery store that's sat there for a week, completely different. And so what is that experience? What are you ultimately trying to drive to? And if you can marry everything around that, it, you really find that it's kind of that differentiator that can take you to the next level. Uh, I do want to answer one of the questions that came in through the Q&A. Joy, you were talking about, do we offer any storytelling trainings? We do not, as of today, we do offer a ton of thought leadership directly through webinars like you're joining us today on. So that's why I love having these because it allows us to answer a ton of questions and reflect back and direct people to them in the future. Um, but that is a good idea for later on. I don't see anyone else coming in through the Q&A section, so I can kind of go into the I webinar mean, chat. There's questions coming in through the comments. I see one that says, do you have any examples of creating brand congruity across a large organization that has multiple locations across a large state? We're in Alaska. And I'll just quickly say, and then I'll, I'll let you answer, Jason. I, I think that really goes back to what we talked about with distillation. So it's really taking that incongruity and creating a congruity, a congruity out of it. Sorry for that tongue twister. So it's really about distilling your message down to a point that it resonates almost universally. But it, again, it's what I just mentioned earlier, it's encoded with the deeper meanings. So that would, that would be my answer there. No, and I, I think you're right. And this is why I, I would love to offer this type of service to everyone here. I would love to be able to do it, but it's, it's something that it's not easy. We understand it's not easy. And that's especially for you in Alaska with what you're trying to do. That's a huge state. You have a lot of different agendas you're probably up against, different perspectives. And so that's where when we talked about that research phase and why it's so important is you need to ensure that you are getting majority of those perspectives to form that elixir with, because you have to find the commonalities with the majority, not the minority. So sometimes if you have a bigger organization that's been around for so long, it is hard because you do need to ensure that you get each level of your audiences. And there are people that can articulate really their feelings because it's that's a hard you know thing to do in general. Some people I speak with can do it very well and others really struggle but if you help kind of point them in the right direction, all of a sudden they're like, oh, yes, that's what we, you know, and it, it clicks. But it's not, I, I, again, this is not something that's simple to do, but when you get it, it clicks and you get it right and you see quick momentum. And so that's why we try to give you a plan of why it's important, how to kind of accomplish it, what to plan for, and then how to really implement it, where it should be implemented, which is everywhere. And I don't want it to I don't want to confuse it with lowest common denominator when I say distillation. It's really not that. It's really about that research and honing in on those those key components of of connective tissue between your audience and demographics. So just like you were saying, and each region of Alaska is so incredibly different. That's part of that complexity that Jason's talking about. It's not it's not a simple thing. And some organizations have very complex stories that are very hard to distill down and tell in a sentence. We realize that, but that is ultimately the mission. That's the quest really to get the elixir. And Allison, you asked, so I, going back and forth with Chad, I was, I was torn about how complex to get and how deep to jump into the psychology of like sales and stuff like that. You're asking, what if our org has a deep history with big donors who like to emphasize our brand in a way that you, that, you don't really like anymore in this modern age. How do you bridge that gap? That is a phenomenal question. I I love the question. And I, it brings up something that I was trying to include and I'm going to talk about it now. It's kind of the, the law of diffusion of innovation, or you can call it product adoption curves, stuff like that. And I kind of hinted at it before. And the idea here is that while those early adopters, those they're the ones that got you where you are. So those big donors, they got you to where you are today. They got you to bridge the gap to where now you probably have a lot more involvement in the community and you've grown substantially. But you get to a point where they can then start holding you back as well. 
And so when we were talking in the beginning about being bold with your messaging, but not to alienate your core clientele, I don't want you to pull a Bud Light. And that is hard for me to say, but it's easy for a lot of people to connect with. It's don't evolve or don't try to revolutionize what you're doing. Try to create a path where you can slowly evolve your messaging away from that, away from what those sticking points that you despise and show them why. Show them the reason, the, the that North Star, establish that North Star and show them where you're going and they will probably start leading themselves with you and start aligning what they're doing with you. There are cases where it can be tough, but yes, uh, that is typically the way I would recommend it. Again, this is an evolution, not a revolution. When you try to re revolutionize something or go super big, super fast, it can be too polarizing and it can come at the cost of alienating big donors who might then turn and take their funding elsewhere. Anything to add to that, Chad? I know I... I mean, the only thing that popped out of my head was just to kind of... <laughs> It, it doesn't add any value, but it's the, I see the movie analogy in terms of producers having opinions on an over, overall movie. <laughs> so, I mean, th that's a great question, Allison, and it's something that if you would like to discuss more, I, it, it sounds like you have a complex need. I mean, that is something we, we'd be interested in discussing. Um, let's see if we have anything else. The Alaska example. Let me address from AM. I did, yes, I trust that. I'm sure the what, how, why. There was a comment in the um in the chat in the QA it said you mentioned King when you said I have a dream. So are you saying he is telling a story? No, he was he was inspiring. So when, when I mentioned Dr. King, he was inspiring and sharing his dream. He wasn't sharing his plan. He didn't tell you how he was going to do it. He didn't give you a step-by-step, -step, you know, play-by-play. -play. He told you what he was shooting for. And he knew that everyone would rally and get behind the end result, not the individual steps to get there. And I thought that was very moving because on that day, I think the crowd was... I had 25 to 28% white. I'm sorry, I'm shooting from the hip here, but I remember it wasn't it wasn't all black. I mean, it was because his dream resonated, which is phenomenal. I mean, I I think he was one of those great orators of his time, and he did such in a way that he sold you the why. The same reason a lot of us loved when we, you know, Apple back in the day we could keep names aside, but the reason why is they had someone that was polarizing, bold on stage. And he would get out there and perform and tell you the why. Tons of companies build computers. Sorry, I don't. That's so good, Jason. That's so powerful. Um, this was awesome. Uh, both of you, I learned a lot. You see, I stayed on. I learned a lot. Um, <laughs> Vanessa says, so don't worry about how we would get there, but what is, what is, what is it we want to accomplish? Um, I don't, I think, I don't, I don't think um, you're saying that, but you can answer that, Jason. And then I'll go ahead and um, end the webinar. I mean, the, the, what it is you're looking to accomplish, that's the personal question. That's the question that I, so what is difficult about doing these, this type of work is that we're going to ask you to dig deep. We're going to ask you to ask yourself questions about why did you choose? Why did you? I mean, so what is it you're looking to accomplish? Well, why did you join your organization to get started? What moved you? What was your personal goal? What did it, what did it help? I know I worked here at TAP Network because I know when I get the chance to work with nonprofit organizations, they help those that can't help themselves. And so I know when I go to bed at night that no matter how bad of a day I've had, regardless that I've made an impact. I'm helping people move forward and I'm helping other people help their target audience. And so, yes, I would love to, you know, have every day be easy, but that's also not part of it. I mean, it's, it, it, you got to enjoy the ride and you got to be willing to extend your hand and let people jump on board with you and take them on your journey. Not everyone's going to be along for the whole, for the whole ride. You got to have people depart at different, you know, different stops, but bring people in, 
Show them you have good intentions because you are at a nonprofit. You have good intentions. I, I can count on one hand how many people I've spoken to since I've been here that I thought were a true front and not a real nonprofit. I mean, you have good intentions, but why did you start? It's it's a tough discussion. Let's see. Anything else to add to that chat? Sorry, I uh, we have one more that someone's raising their hand. Elijah. No, that was a great speech in and of itself. Let's see here. Did you mentioned what are these slides? Be? Yes, the slides will be presented afterwards. I'm looking at Elijah. If you throw your comment in the Q&A, we do have time to get to it. Allison, I'd like you. Thank you. It, it is tricky, but sticky. But yes, I hear you. It, it is. Yeah, and you're correct. Tricky, but sticky. I like that. Uh, it is it, when it comes to evolving your mission, when you're really set in like concrete, for example, uh, chisel one block away at a time. I, it, and then sometimes people don't even realize the foundation has moved. I, I would tell you it is, but you have to create a plan of where you're going and then create the steps to getting there to where it, it's an easier transition. I mean, to, Chad and I kind of went back and forth on including Bud Light as an example. I think if Bud Light would have done something similar, they maybe would have had a much better uptake what they were trying to accomplish. But they went out and they were polarized and they their, their stock short term has paid for it. Now, we'll see if it ends up being different later on. But right now, it looks like it was an absolute failure. Um, so looking, I don't see any more coming in the q and I'm trying to read some of the webinar chat comments. Are there any that stuck out to you, Chad? No, I think that kind of covers it. It's, you know, it just really kind of goes back to what we what has been sort of repetitious through all of these answers is that 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 act two of the hero's journey is the hard part. And that's what we're talking about here. And that's that's really the pain point for trying to get from point A to point B in terms of your story is that part of the quest. So that is the hard part. And through through research and research and research, you know, we can get there. Well, I appreciate all of your time and effort today. Uh, we have enjoyed meeting with you. Hopefully everyone had a lot to take away from this. Um, anything else that you have questions on, Aretha? No, this anything is awesome. Anything you would like to share? Yeah, this is great. Thank you so much, both of you. Thank you, everyone. You're very welcome. Thank you all today, and we will meet you next time.